Family Theater presents Jeffrey Hunter and Barbara Rush. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents New Neighbor, starring Barbara Rush and Jeffrey Hunter. <laughs> Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, New Neighbor, starring Jeffrey Hunter as Jim and Barbara Rush as Patsy. When a family moves because of a change in the breadwinner's position in the business world, a whole new life has begun for everyone involved. Such a change has come to Jim and Patsy Stone and their son Mike. This is the first day in their new home in the city of Brannan. The movers have just departed, and the endless job of unpacking has just begun. Would you give me a hand with this box of linen, dear? That's your thing, Pat. Just let me finish opening this box of books. Hey, Mom, where should I put my sled? Well, just put it in your closet for now. Okay, Mom. Ah, ah. Now, what's your trouble, little lady? This little lady is troubled mostly by one big box of linen. I like it over here by the closet. Yes, ma'am. Now, this one, huh? Lennon B. B? Yes, Lennon B. According to my master packing list, it contains our sheets and pillowcases, see? <laughs> well, this looks like a ship's manifest. Patsy, dear, you're the greatest little organizer in the world. Oh, no time for flattery. There's work to be done. Lift that bar. And talk that bail. Okay, there we go. Back to work. By the linen closet in the hall, please, Jim. Oh, no, I'll get it. Yeah, if you don't mind, I've got my hands full of Lennon B. Yes? Hello. I'm one of your new neighbors, Marcia Adams. Oh, how nice. Please come in. I'm Patsy Stone. I'm sure you're terribly busy. I can only stay a moment. Oh, really? We're doing very well. I know what moving can be like. Everything is always... Well, you seem to be settled already. You'd never believe this was your first day. Organization. That's the secret. Well, it certainly must be. I thought I'd drop over with these cookies, you know, as something you could lunch on. Oh, but... how thoughtful. Thank you. Only I'm sorry that we've just finished having some coffee and some cookies. I made up early this morning. But it won't take a minute to warm up the coffee. Would you care for some? You baked cookies this morning? Oh, it was a very simple recipe. I thought it would make us feel at home. How about that coffee? Oh, no, thank you. I can't stay. About a milkman, now, I take... Oh, we're a... all set with Dairyland. I checked with the city health department, and from what I can tell, they seem to be the best. Don't you think so? Well, I suppose so. We take from the Brannan Dairy. Oh. Mrs. Stone, are you interested in club work? I would so like to have you come down for a luncheon sometime at our club. We need good workers. Wonderful. I hope to transfer my Women's League membership to the Brannan chapter. Oh, really? I'm with the Guild. Oh. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing much of each other. Do, uh, do you live right across the street? Yes. We have for many years. Oh, it's a beautiful home. You must come over soon. Well, I can see there's little you need. It's been most pleasant, Mrs. Stone. We must see each other sometime. Goodbye. Well, you were sweet to come over. Thank you for the cookies. Bye. Hey. What's that? Oh, with neighbor, Mrs. Adams. Well, why so serious? Oh, I don't know. She was most friendly at first, then sort of cold. Oh, well, it'll work out. Now, now, I thought we should... Oh, not again. I'll go, honey. It's my turn. People can be friendly at the funniest times. Well, better than having them the other way. Well, but why couldn't they wait? Probably just the newspaper boy. Yes? I'll bet you're Jim Stone. I'll take that bet and lose. <laughs> I am Jim Stone. Alice Brooks, Jim. <gasps> Oh, sure. Ted Brooks, local office, National Steel. I'll uh, be working with your husband, right? Well, he calls it working. I'm supposed to see that you get properly settled. Well, come on in. Uh, we have a supervisor, but I suppose you could be timekeeper. Good. Say, 
Pat, look what I found. Well, you seem to do better than I did. <laughs> I certainly did. Patsy, may I present Alice Brooks? She's uh, Ted Brooks' wife from the local office. Wonderful. I met Ted when he used to come for conferences at Jim's old office. I know. He's talked of you glowingly. I'm so glad you're here. I know we'll have fun. Oh, uh, by the way, Tom and I would like to have you come to dinner tonight. Oh, good deal. Oh, that's sweet of you, but I, I really don't think we should. I was hoping to get Mike in school tomorrow, and I've sort of planned a dinner. But we'll certainly take you up on it after we're settled. Well, suit yourself. We just thought it would save you the bother. Tell me about Brannon. Is it a happy town? Happy? Well, I suppose. That's up to the people in it, in any town. Social life? Oh, yes, quite active socially. With business mixed in quite thoroughly. Oh, good. I like to keep busy. Oh, I want to meet everyone. You have, dear. What? I have? And how? What do you mean, Alice? Well, I wasn't going to mention it, but maybe it would be best if you knew. Well, for goodness sake, know what? A minute ago, as I came up the walk, someone else came out the walk. Oh, you mean Mrs. Mrs. Uh... Yes, Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Winston Adams. Marsha Adams, president of the Women's Guild, member of the board at the Country Club, president of the Women's Association at the Cub, past president of Women's Club, and director of the Community Service Project. Also, or should I go on? Enough said, I think. Wow. Sort of a club woman uh, with a club in both hands, huh? <laughs> exactly. Patsy, dear, what in the world did you do to her? Well, I don't know. She did leave in sort of a huff. Yes, that you can say again. I'm afraid she wasn't too happy with you. Uh, I shouldn't be saying this, but I think you should know. Marsh Adams is pretty powerful. Oh, I'm sure I can make it up to her, though I don't know why I should. Oh, we'll get by. Well, I hope so. You see, Winston Adams, her husband, is the town's leading contractor. Mm. And, according to Tom, the town's most important steel consumer. Uh -oh. I believe he's to be one of Jim's accounts. Ouch. Oh, not really. I'm afraid so. And dear sweet Winston does just exactly what Marsha says he's to do. Oh, my... I did get us off to a beautiful beginning, didn't I? Aren't you the one? A few weeks in town and look at you now. Oh, but I haven't done anything. Well, my busy little bee, you've certainly done a job for the Ways and Means Committee. And now you've been appointed as the community service representative for the league. That's pretty fast work. Oh, I have had experience before, you know. And you do want to impress Marsha Adams. <laughs> That's part of it. Oh, I figured that I'd be working directly under her, and maybe I could somehow break the ice. Do you know I never see her? She always has some excuse or something to avoid me. Mm, she's a hard one. Well, we'll see about that. She'll have to talk to me now, and I'll do such a good job, she can't ignore me. I'm sure you will. Yes? Oh. How do you do, Mrs. Stone? Oh, hello, Mrs. Adams. May I see you for I a moment? I was just going downtown. Oh, well, I wanted to tell you that I've been appointed to the Women's League representative to the Community Service Council. I'm reporting for duty. Oh, I see. Well, won't you come in? Oh, thank you. I really have only a moment, but I'm sure I can give you something to do. Oh, wonderful. I'm so anxious to get started. Now, in Milltown, I handled the entire drive for funds. We were most successful. I hope I can help out here in Brannon. I'm sure you can. Well, I always say organization is the secret. Do you type, Mrs. Stone? Oh, yes. Y yes, I do. Good. Let's see. I had those lists somewhere in my desk. Oh, may I help? No. I'll find them. Oh, yes, here they are. Mrs. Stone, these are our mailing lists. Every year before our fundraising campaign, we send out mailing pieces. I shall tell the printer that you are in charge and he can send pamphlets to you. There are close to 25,000 names, I believe. The lists need revising, and I'm sure you'll do a wonderful job with your knack for organization. But I thought then I could... Then, too, you'll be able to do it at home. Uh, perhaps some of your league members will help you out. Oh, but I've had experience Every doing so many... Every job we do in community service is important. Most of the executive positions are filled by people who've been in Brannan for some time. There are no small jobs. Only small workers. I see. Yes, Mrs. Adams, I, I shall try to do my best. say, 
Hey, Mrs. Stone. Cease. Hey, stop. <laughs> oh, honey, hold on there a minute, will you? Oh, don't stop me now, Jim. I'm just getting started. Eleven o'clock at night is time to start to bed, not to work. You, you're working too hard. Oh, no, I'm not, and I love it. You know we ought to get out more often. Say, um, how about that big party the Maxwells are giving at the club? Party? Yeah, you know, Tom and Alice are going, and Dorothy Maxwell's a member of that league of yours, isn't she? Oh, yes, but I, I don't know about any party. Well, maybe she just hadn't gotten around to t- asking you. Oh, yes, perhaps that's it. Jim, are, are we going to be accepted into the club? Well, I don't know, Pat. Our application's in. It's, it's up to the membership committee. I hope we do. It'd give me some good contacts. Well, who's head of the membership committee? Well, Marsha Adams. Oh, no. Come on into the kitchen, Patsy. Okay. Alice, I wanted to talk. Then talk. You don't mind if I go ahead getting dinner? Oh, of course not. Why the long face, Patsy? It's not like you. Well, I... Oh, Alice. I've never been quite in this spot before. What spot is that, Patsy? Oh, a new town, new people, and getting absolutely nowhere. Well, maybe you haven't given people time. It's a funny town about strangers. Wait till they get to know you and appreciate you. Well, I've done everything I can to help. Yes, and you've done everything beautifully. Perhaps too beautifully. What? Nothing. Just a silly idea of mine. It'll work out, Patsy. Oh, golly, I hope so. I wanted to so much. Well, I'd better run. Oh, Alice, that avocado. What are you starting to do? I was going to peel it. Why? Oh, look, let me show you. You see, you lose so much of the meat by just simply peeling it with a knife. Now, now all you have to do is cut it all the way around. There, and open it. Uh-huh. Take out the seed and, and then run the handle of the spoon. Oh, here's one. Between the meat and the skin. There. You see? Not a bit wasted and so easy. Well, what do you know? You've revolutionized my whole life. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Alice. Well, goodbye. I'll go out the back. Goodbye, Pat. And don't worry. That you, Jim? Jim? Yeah. Yeah, I'm home. Oh, good. You're early. I'll have things ready in just a moment. Has something you especially like. But, Jim, what's the matter? Oh, just a hard day, I guess. Well, it must have been. You look done in. Yeah. Anything special go wrong? Well, yes and no. Uh, mostly yes, I guess. Tell me. Oh, sure. Maybe you can help. Well? Patty, what's the matter with us? Now, how did we get off on the wrong foot here? So that's it. I've been wondering the very same thing, and I don't know the answer. It's not really important, and then, and then again it is. You know, things keep happening. Like? Well, well we've been turned down at the club. Oh, no. Well, maybe we can get in later, and maybe we don't have to join at all, but it gripes me to be turned down. Oh, I know, I know. And then, well, today I lost a big order from Adams. Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim, it's my fault. Oh, now, honey, that's not possible, I'm sure. Oh, yes, it is. It's completely possible somehow or other. I haven't been done anything right since we got here. Oh, you're exaggerating, Patsy. (laughs) Oh, no, I'm not. It's true, and the horrible thing about it is I don't know exactly what I've done wrong or or how to make it right. (laughs) Anybody home and can I have a cookie? Oh, in here, Mike, and it would spoil your dinner. Hi, Mom. You feeling better? Oh, much better, Mike, thank you. Headache's nearly all gone. Dad and I were worried about you this morning. (laughs) Oh, were you? Uh Uh-huh. Gee, you missed your league meeting today, didn't you, Mom? Uh, I guess I did. Is that club in the big league, Mom? No, Mike, it's just in a very little league. Mike, how do you like it here in Brannon? Oh, it's okay, I guess. Do you like the youngsters? I mean... I, I know you seem to like school all right, but well, I just wondered how you felt about the youngsters in the neighborhood. The kids? Gee, Mom, they're just kids, I guess. They're all right. You don't have any trouble getting along with them? No, nah, they're just like any other kids. They do have some funny ideas, though. What do you mean? Oh, you know. They do things differently. Play different. I don't know. Guess everybody has a way of doing things. Well, doesn't that bother you? 
Gosh, no. I just let them go ahead and do it their way. They like to show me how, so I let them. Well, but maybe the way you do things is better. Well, maybe. But I figure I can bring them around to my way after I get in with them. It's their town. After you get in with them? It's their town. That's what I said. Oh, I know, Mike. I was just thinking. Oh, see who's there, will you please, dear? Sure thing, Mom. They like to show me how. Hello, Mike. Hi, Mrs. Brooks. Your mother home? Uh-huh. Come on in. I hear she isn't feeling so well. She's better. It's Mrs. Brooks, Mom. Oh, so I see. Come on in, Alice. Can I go out and play, Mom? Well, run up and change your clothes, and then you may. Okay. Mike? Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Brooks. <laughs> Certainly, Mike. will have a good time. Well, that's quite a guy you've got there. Oh, I think so. I learn things from him every day. How are you feeling, Patsy? Oh, much, much better. I just had uh, a bit of a headache. Well, everyone was most sorry you couldn't come to the meeting. They all wanted me to tell you that they'd be glad to do anything they could. Oh, oh no, really, I... I, well, as a matter of fact, maybe there are some things I would appreciate having done, since I am feeling rather low. Well, name them. Well, I, I wonder if Mrs. Martin could have those charity dance tickets printed. Well, that's just what she suggested. She did? Well, good. And I would like to borrow that wonderful humidifier of Jane's. I, I think more moisture in the room would help my sinus. You won't believe it, but she wanted to bring it over. Really? But she was afraid you wouldn't want it. I'll call her. Well, I, I do have to go to the grocery store. Mrs. Stevenson was going later this afternoon and wanted me to find out if there was anything you wanted. <laughs> well, well, here's the list. Good. Oh, I never Now, realized. look, here's what I want to do. Let me get your supper. Tom would be glad to come over. You just sit right there and take it easy. Oh, no, I... You really want to? Well, certainly I do. Well, if, if you insist. I do. Now, what else? What else? Mm-hmm. What else can we do for you? Oh, oh, well, well, now, let's see. You might have Mrs. Nichols arrange for those extra chairs we'll need at the bridge party. Do you think the humidifier helps, Patsy? Oh, yes. Yes, it does seem to help some. Mrs. Martin called to say that the ticket situation is well in hand. Good. I'm glad. Very glad. Mrs. Stevenson has done a wonderful job of shopping for you. Some good bargains. Oh, I knew she would. Can you find everything in the kitchen? Now, don't you worry. Everything's fine. Yes, it is fine. you can't imagine how much I appreciate your coming over, Mrs. Adams. The headache now, is... Now, don't you worry, dear. I saw Mrs. Nichols downtown and she told me you were ill. I have some wonderful medicine I thought you'd like to try. Oh, well, good. Here. Uh, just a teaspoonful. Uh, now, steady. Uh, ah, there. Oh, uh, yes, it... It certainly tastes effective. Uh, oh, I... I do believe I feel bitter already, Mrs. Adams. Oh, I knew you would. Uh, call me Marsha, Patsy, dear. Oh, my friends, my good friends do. Oh, yes, Marsha. And, and Marsha, I've been wanting to ask your advice. I need your help. Well, now, I was just saying the other day to Winston, Patsy Stone is a most efficient woman, but she insists on going about things. Patsy! Patsy! Oh, Jim! Jim in here! What in the world is going on around here, Pat? Shh! I'm being helped! <gasps> oh, oh, oh! Are you really that sick? Well, not really, but then, then again, I really am. Seems to make everyone so happy. <laughs> I think everyone I've met in this town has called to come by this afternoon. Goodness, I'm amazed! Well, I'll be darned. So that accounts for it. For what? Well, in one short conference with Mr. Winston Adams this afternoon, I learned, one... Our firm will get a steel order, after all, and two, we've been asked to join the club. No. Oh, Jim, that's wonderful. Honey, how did you manage it? Oh, it's so simple that it's frightening, Jim. I, I learned it from Mike. From Mike? From Mike. People like to do for you and not have you do for them. And they like things done their own way. 
When you're getting acquainted anywhere, if you're a stranger in need, it, it makes people feel good to help you. My mistake was that I didn't need any help. Well, I have help now. And many wonderful friends. So that's what's going on out in the kitchen. Oh, yes. We will soon be served dinner. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, son. Mom, I've been out in the kitchen, and Mrs. Brooks is putting the salad on those blue plates. Oh, no, we always have salad on the large green... Oh, she is? Well, what a wonderful idea. I think it'll work out nicely. <laughs> Now, once again, the stars of tonight's show, Barbara Rush and Jeff Hunter. Thank you, Tony. Yes, thank you indeed, Tony, especially for giving me first billing. Uh, Barbara, he was just being polite, dear. You see, on that letter that invited us to appear on Family Theater, I got first billing. I don't remember anything like that. Well, sure, it wasn't the letter uh, addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Jeff Hunter. Uh, me first. Oh, Jeff, that was just a formality. Oh, now, how do you like that, Tony? She considers being Mrs. Hunter just a formality. Oh, now, that isn't what I said. I said... Now, Jeff, Barbara, we can't have any family squabbles on family theater. That is, except in the script. That's right. And they're always patched up before any damage is done. But so are all real family quarrels, Jeff, if all parties concerned are willing to give and take. Well, well. yeah, give and take, that's right. And also take and give, don't you think? Well, you mean like taking a few minutes every day to consider how much they have to be grateful for as a family? That's right. And then giving thanks in their prayers for all the love and happiness that God has sent them. Well, this is just one man's opinion, but I'd say the Hunter household, including that nine-month-old son of yours waiting at home, is real evidence of your beliefs. And we've got it down to a system. Would you mind telling us the secret? It's just as you remind us every week. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you New Neighbor, starring Jeffrey Hunter and Barbara Rush. Others in our cast were Charlotte Lawrence, Virginia Gregg, and Peter Votrian. The script was written by Roderick Peterson, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Otto Kruger and William Lundigan in Abalone Boat. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.